Welcome to the Brave Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Lin, founder of Sistership Circle and author of Open Your Heart and The Art of Leading Circle. I'm the mother of two girls and eight on the Enneagram, aka the Challenger, happily married to my business partner, Brent, love connecting with nature, and have put in well over 10,000 hours circling with other women. On this podcast, we will explore how to embody the brave woman so that you can take action on your dreams and desires, unapologetically speak your truth, and live life on your own terms. Grab a seat and a cup of tea, and let's get started. Congratulations, sister. You have come to the end of this heroine's journey. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you for being a brave woman, making it all the way here. Wow. So just taking that moment to receive my witnessing, my love, just, yeah, like feeling yourself, like what you've gone through. And When we come to the completion of anything, we want to make sure that we have consciousness around it. Conscious completion, I think, is really, really important thing for us to bring into our lives because really we are cycling, cycling, we're spiraling through life and we're constantly coming through these various cycles and we want to make sure that we understand this death and rebirth that we're constantly going through that when we think it's the end it's actually the beginning of something new and so the more that we can bring conscious awareness into this the more that we can get the lessons the more that we can really be in the flow the ebb and flow of the death and rebirth process as women we go through this every single month when we bleed We then come to the end of a cycle, we complete that, and we start anew. And if you're not bleeding, then it's with the moons, right? Every new moon, we are ending and beginning the next 28-day cycle. With every year, we're doing the same thing as we go through the seasons. And there's these seasons of life, right, with our um, various rites of passages. And so I want to bring that all into your conscious completion of this heroine's journey. And for you to understand that because life is cyclical and life spirals, you might find that you come to some of these points that you explored in this journey that we've been on, you might come to them again. And sometimes we think, why am I visiting this again? Why am I getting this lesson again? It's because you actually have more capacity to go deeper with it. That's a really important distinction that we think that things should just be complete, that these patterns should be gone away forever, that we should never revisit or rehash these things, but they come up for us for a reason as medicine, as a lesson for whatever initiation we're going through next. And so really to look at this heroine's journey, not as a singular process, but one that you're going to repeat over and over again. And so really, what are the tools that you've learned to be able to navigate these initiations that you're going to be constantly going through as you continue to up-level your leadership, up-level your life? And I like to think of it as sometimes we're in maintenance mode and we're kind of cruising through a cycle. And then there's those points of initiation when we got to turn on the fire and we've got to really start doing the digger deep the the deeper digging and that again it's cyclical and so for you to really review what it is that you've learned on this journey and so let us review real quickly some of the things that we've learned so in the first section we were in the release of the wounded feminine. We were looking at how we've been disconnected from our own feminine power through the sister wound, mother wound, and witch wound, which we can also look at as the disconnect from the maiden, the mother, and the crone. And through this releasing, really looking at the limited beliefs, the things that we learned, 
and the way in which we then had the split from the divine feminine. And so these things could come up again. It, there, it's, you know, again, that cyclical nature, the spiraling that we do, and that you now have capacity. You have more capacity to look deeper at some of the wounds that you can actually excavate and really go into them in a way that might not be possible in this moment, right? And so to look at your relationship with women, your relationship with your mother, your relationship with Mother Earth, your relationship with the, the, the older you get, right? With the crone, that witch, the, your relationship with aging. That's really what I wanted to say there. And that we get to keep revisiting these things and understanding that if someone comes into your life to trigger this, don't shoot the messenger, get the message, right? If a woman triggers you, it's not her fault. It's an opportunity for you to go within and look at yourself, your belief systems, the wiring, the patterning, and to shift yourself and your behaviors and your reactions and your triggers. In the second section, we went into the surrender. And the surrender is really that letting go, the putting down of your sword and shield, and going into the first part was the passing of the gates of judgment, going into the abyss, starting to look at your guilt, your shame, your fears, and giving up your old ways of being. And um, this is really about looking at the roles that you play, the masks that you wear, and that it might feel really comfortable to put them back on. And so to have that awareness of these things, this old way of being. And once we get through this review, I want to take us through um, a ritual to help you to really get this piece. And then that receiving of support where we went into the red tent and starting to reconnect and be held by other women, be held by the goddess, be held by the mother, like really get that you're not on this journey alone. And that's part of the surrender is surrendering into being held by something greater than yourself, whether that's the sisterhood or the great mother energy. And then we went into healing the masculine and our relationship with our fathers, our relationship with the wounded toxic masculine and starting to look at how we interact, what our relationship is with the masculine. And again, this is going to be something that's always going to be a work in progress. And then there was the rebirthing of yourself, the, the integration of masculine and feminine, the sacred union. And really starting to look at your commitments, what you're committed to, um, and coming into that right relationship with, between your own inner masculine and feminine. And then the third section was moving into the embodiment, the embodiment of your, your voice, the embodiment of your magic, the embodiment of your pleasure. And this is really where the work is going to continue, right? We're always going to be having those moments when we need to release, but it's not just about the releasing. It's also about the recreating something new and the embodiment of that. And so this is really where you want to hang out. You want to create your own rituals and your own practices to continue to speak your truth, to continue to really connect with your magic, the magic of being a human being, that ability that you have to create and your individual magic of what you brought to this planet, your innate gifts and talents, and the things that you cultivated over your lifetime. And the pleasure of enjoying this magical world that we live in, the enjoyment of our senses, the enjoyment of what it means to be a woman that we can start to soften and relax into the pleasure of life. 
that life doesn't need to always be so hard. And this is something that I'm constantly working on is, yeah, really just feeling, slowing down, being in the sensuality of this beautiful world. And so that was our journey. And so in conscious completion, taking out a journal and writing down the the lessons that you learned. If you were to go back week by week and and look at this, and maybe you want to review these these videos, maybe you want to um, go back to any notes and, and start to really get the gold here. And the gold is the things that felt uncomfortable, the things that you moved through, the insights that you had, the lessons. And then there's the celebrations. And sometimes we look at the dark, we look at what didn't work or the challenging moments, and we don't take that time to really just surrender into the celebration, to be in that receptive energy of... Uh, just, yeah, like what really worked and what felt really good in those moments of bliss and, and pleasure. And so to be in the celebration of that as well. And that hopefully that's the journey that you went on was the highs and the lows. And it's the, the peaks and the valleys are both equally beautiful. Can we honor both? And not be craving one and trying to avert from the other, but just being in this, yes, this is life. This is the way life goes. So there is always the fear of slipping back into the old. There is always that that way in which we go back to what's familiar, what's comfortable, which are the old patterns and the way in which our egos keep us safe. And so there's a beautiful ritual and it is a funeral ritual of the old self and a rebirthing baptism ritual for the new self. And I invite you to take some time to give yourself these ceremonies. And it's really powerful to do these in a circle of women, to be witnessed and to be supported through it, but equally as powerful to do it by yourself. And so the funeral ritual is to take yourself into a dark room wearing all black, and to imagine yourself at your own funeral. And as you're at your own funeral, to pay attention to what other people are saying about you. And to really be in the funeral of the new person, the amazing person, like you lived your best life. And to really feel the power of the legacy that you're building and really be in the future vision of all these amazing people celebrating your life, right? And then to flip it. And if you hadn't gone on this journey and you hadn't changed anything and you went right back into all those old patterns, but it got even darker and it got even worse, like you were really, really not your best self. And you were not living your potential that you do that funeral and imagining that no one shows up, not even your dog. And in fact, it just got so bad that it was just like you are experiencing a complete numbness around this. Like what a wasted life. And so after taking yourself through these two different scenarios of two different ways in which your funeral could occur. It's the then put your staff into the ground, put your anchor and to say no more. And to in that moment, make that conscious choice of which funeral you're willing 
to have for yourself because you're creating that. And that is to look at that every day could be your last. And are you consciously aware of how you're choosing to live your life? Are you showing up as a brave woman? Are you having the uncomfortable conversations? Are you in your magic? Are you enjoying and present to this beautiful life in which you get to live? The appreciation and gratitude for the people, for the circumstances, for all of it. And it actually gets to become a living prayer. This exercise can be extremely, extremely powerful. It can be very moving. It can bring things up. But it's really an opportunity to make a choice of how you are going to live moving forward. To walk the path of love. To continue to be a brave woman. And to continue to do the work. And that as long as you are committed to doing that, it's okay, you're going to fall off. It's okay, you're going to make mistakes. But can you see that those mistakes are actually opportunities for growth? They're not failures. And every time you have that awareness, you get to clean things up. You get to restore your integrity. You get to continue to lean into your relationships. And that's how that is going to leave That's how you're going to leave this planet is with that legacy of, wow, that woman showed up. That woman showed up. So after the funeral, then going through the rebirth process, the baptism, and taking yourself either into a pool, a lake, a bathtub, an ocean, And if you can have someone there to bring your head under the water and then imagining yourself coming into the world anew with fresh eyes as a baby would and making that commitment to show up and maybe there's a statement that you want to create such as, I am a brave woman committed to showing up and doing the work for the rest of my life that I vow to continue to show up for myself, the people in my life, and the world at large. So you can use that or you can create another one. And this baptism ritual can be extremely, extremely empowering and one that you may never forget. And so really tuning into what would be most supportive. Is it a beautiful bathtub where you are doing this yourself and you're going under the water and you're emerging in this very pleasurable environment? Or is it in the ocean or a pool? Is it with a sister who's holding space or is it alone? But taking this ritual seriously, there's these moments in time, these defining moments And when we're consciously aware of creating these moments, we never forget them. We did a beautiful ritual like this with one of our mastery retreats. And it's still something that I vividly remember and will never forget. Because of the power that it held, the transformation that took place for these women. So I bring that as a gift to you, a ritual that you can use for yourself. And so knowing that you're going to continue to have more heroines journeys, you're going to continue to have more initiations, what's the support that you have in place when you find yourself journeying down into the underworld again? When it feels like you're going into the dark, into the shadow, into the realm in which you can't see a couple steps ahead of yourself, do you have the support system so that you're not drowning in that dark, murky water? And so that might be a challenge for you. That might be something that, you know, to to bring conscious awareness of creating, co-creating with sisters or who are those go-to sisters, those powerful sisters 
and to call them in if they're not in your life already, or if they don't know that they're there, those people for you, that you actually co-create that together so that you have the support or, you know, finding and calling in that mentor to guide you through the next challenging moments of your life. But you have the tools, you have the awareness you understand the journey here. And this is extremely powerful work for us to keep cycling through as women, as leaders, as brave leaders. The world needs us to keep doing the work because we're not only clearing for our own lineage, we're clearing for all the bodies that are near us. We are clearing for our families, our communities, and the world at large. When we start doing the work and clearing out sister wound, you're doing that for every woman on this planet. When you are clearing out the witch wound, you're doing that for every woman on this planet. When you're doing the mother wound work, you're creating a new way in which mothers can relate to their daughters in the future. And when you have that guilt come up of, oh, wow, I wish I would have known this earlier. I wish I could have been a mother. mother. Know that your children, if you have them, chose you. They chose you with where you were at in your journey. And that even if you feel like you made mistakes and you weren't showing up the way you could, this work right here, and that you continue to do will make an impact. That I know for sure. So sister, congratulations. I wish you the best on your journey through this lifetime and the lifetimes beyond. And I really hope that you got value from me being your guide. And I look forward to however our paths may cross in the future you just listened to this show, I'd love for you to leave the Brave Woman podcast an honest review. Reviews help podcasts like this one grow, making it more possible for me to devote my time, energy, and money to its production. If you take a screenshot of your review and email it to support at sistershipcircle.com, we'll send you one of our archetype activations as a thank you gift. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. 